Hi everyone, Reverend Doerr here from Faith Community Church. We're still in chapter nine of our study, Lessons from Daniel. As I shared last week, this chapter is the most explosive chapter in the Bible concerning future events, especially as they relate to Israel. I said it last week and it bears mentioning again, many scholars agree that Daniel chapter nine is the most significant passage of prophecy written in the Bible. It reveals one of the most amazing prophetic passages regarding the future. You know, church, I find it sad that many believers have not yet studied this book. Please listen. The book of Daniel gives us prophetic insight regarding the times we are living in now and how to prepare for what lies ahead. By studying the dreams and visions of Daniel and then cross-referencing them as to what has already taken place, what has already been fulfilled in world history, can build confidence in the accuracy of Scripture. Church, the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Amen? Now, if you missed last week's lesson, let me encourage you to watch it on our YouTube channel. We left off in chapter 9 of the book of Daniel at verse 25. So this week, let's go back to Daniel chapter 9, and let's begin reading through again, beginning at verse 24. It says here, a period of 70 sets of seven has been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish their rebellion, to put an end to their sin, to atone for their guilt, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to confirm the prophetic vision and to anoint the most holy place. Now listen and understand, seven sets of seven plus 62 sets of seven will pass from the time the command is given to rebuild Jerusalem until a ruler, the anointed one, comes. Jerusalem will be built with streets and strong defenses despite the perilous times. Verse 26, after this period of 62 sets of seven, the anointed one will be killed appearing to have accomplished nothing. And a ruler will arise whose armies will destroy the city and the temple. The end will come with a flood and war and its miseries are decreed from that time to the very end. The ruler will make a treaty with the people for a period of one set of seven. But after half this time, he will put an end to the sacrifices and offerings. And as a climax to all his terrible deeds, he will set up a sacrilegious object that causes desecration until the fate decreed for this defiler is finally poured out on him. Now, last week, church, we learned that this prophetic insight had been given to Daniel from the angel Gabriel, who was sent the moment that Daniel had begun to pray a prayer of repentance on behalf of himself and the nation of Israel. In his prayer in verses 3 through 21, Daniel was inquiring of the Lord concerning the end of Israel's 70-year Babylonian captivity. That's when Gabriel showed up and began to reveal to Daniel a whole lot more than he had anticipated. You see, church, given to Daniel in these few verses is a prophetic timeline. It is a timeline like no other. It is a timeline of the history of the Jews and the nation of Israel, as God had decreed in order to accomplish six specific things, which we studied last week, written here in verse 24. Number one, to finish their rebellion. Number two, to put an end to their sin. Number three, to atone for their guilt. Number four, to bring in everlasting righteousness. Five, to confirm the prophetic vision. And six, to anoint the most holy place. 
Now, for more insight on these, I encourage you to watch last week's lesson on, your, on our YouTube channel. <clears throat> Church, the prophecy of Daniel predicted when Jesus would come on the scene and be presented as Israel's long-awaited Messiah. The lesson for us today is to discover when did this prophetic timeline begin? When did this clock start ticking? Gabriel told Daniel in verse 24, a period of 70 sets of seven has been decreed for your people and your holy city. Now we established last week that the sets of seven that Gabriel refers to here is speaking in terms of years. And we know that because of the context of the passage. So we can read this verse as 70 sets of seven years. Now, 70 sets of seven years is 70 times seven, right? Well, what is 70 times seven? That equals church to 490 years. So Gabriel tells Daniel that in 490 years, God is going to accomplish the following six things for the Jewish people and the city of Jerusalem. First, he's going to finish their rebellion. Second, he's going to put an end to their sin. Third, he's going to atone for their guilt. Fourth, bring in everlasting righteousness. Fifth, he's going to confirm the prophetic vision which we learned last week means put an end to prophecy because it will all have been fulfilled. And number six or six, anoint the most holy place, which we know is the holy city of Jerusalem. So God is going to accomplish all of this in a period of 490 years. But Gabriel doesn't end it there. He continues in verse 25, breaking all of this down even further. He tells Daniel in verse 25, now listen and understand, seven sets of seven plus 62 sets of seven will pass from the time the command is given to rebuild Jerusalem until a ruler, the anointed one, comes. Jerusalem will be rebuilt with streets and strong defenses despite the perilous times. So Gabriel lets Daniel know that 490 years are going to occur in separate increments of time. The first will take place in seven sets of seven, which is seven times seven years, which equals 49 years. And this is going to begin, he said, when the command to rebuild Jerusalem is given. And the second will take place in 62 sets of seven, which is 62 times seven years or 434 years when the anointed one pointing to the Messiah will come. So Gabriel tells Daniel there will be a total of 483 years from the command to rebuild the temple until the anointed one, the Messiah of Israel, arrives. Now let me mention here that a year is not being calculated by the Gregorian calendar as we know it of 365 days in a year but rather it is being counted by a lunar year of 360 days a year, which is how time was calculated by the Babylonians and the Jews. Now, many scholars agree that this countdown began in 444 BC when King Artaxerxes gave Nehemiah permission and resources to go and rebuild Jerusalem. And you can find this account recorded in Nehemiah chapter 2. Now, when you add these two sets of seven up, 49 years plus 434 years, they equal to 483 years. But according to Daniel's prophecy, we're waiting for 490 years, right? 
So where are these last seven years? Hold on, church, because we're going to get there. But for now, let's take a look at verse 26. Church, I want you to know this part is truly amazing. Verse 26, Daniel chapter 9, uh, 10, uh, 9, sorry. After this period of 62 sets of seven, the anointed one will be killed, appearing to have accomplished nothing. And a ruler will arise whose armies will destroy the city and the temple. The end will come with a flood and the war and its mis and war and its miseries are decreed from that time to the very end. The ruler will make a treaty with the people for a period of one set of seven. But after half this time, he will put an end to the sacrifices and offerings. And as a climax to all his terrible deeds, he will set up a sacrilegious object that causes desecration until the fate decreed for this defiler is finally poured out on him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Church, in this passage, Gabriel reveals to Daniel that the coming Messiah is going to be killed. Another translation says he will be cut off. Church, God reveals to Daniel through the angel Gabriel, when the Messiah comes, he's going to be cut off or put to death. And this was revealed to Daniel Church hundreds of years before Christ's crucifixion. Jesus' death on the cross is the fulfillment of this prophecy. The Hebrew word for will be killed here is kerat. And it was used in a number of times in the Old Testament speaking of the execution of a criminal. Jesus was executed as a criminal for crimes, beloved, that he did not commit. A punishment that he was willing to bear for your sins and mine. Not only was the Son of God cut off from this earth and mankind, he was cut off, church, from God himself as he cried out on that cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Gabriel says here, his death would appear as having accomplished nothing. Well, it would have appeared that way in the natural realm, but church, we know it was not like that in the spiritual realm. You see, on that cross, Jesus conquered sin and the grave. The Bible teaches us that he disarmed the powers of darkness and authorities, making an open spectacle of them. Amen? Now, Gabriel went on to say that a ruler would arise whose armies would destroy the city and the temple. So if you have the ESV version, because we're reading from the New Living Translation, I feel the ESV translation is a little bit more accurate in this verse where it says, and the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, its end shall come with a flood, and to the end there shall be war, desolations are decreed. Now the way this is worded here gives us clear insight. You see, in 70 AD, Titus, a Roman general and a future emperor of Rome, besieged the city of Jerusalem and destroyed the second temple. So we know by history that the people in this passage, the people of the prince who is to come, is referring to the Romans. So this tells us, beloved, that the prince who is to come speaking of the future, will come from a future Roman Empire, which many scholars call a revised Roman Empire. History has already confirmed that it was the Romans who destroyed the holy city and the temple in 70 AD. 
where it says here, its end shall come with a flood and to the end there shall be war. This is telling us that the siege of Jerusalem would be devastating like a flood washing over the land. And indeed it did, just as it was prophesied. So we know throughout her history, beloved, Jerusalem has been the epicenter of many wars and battles. The battle for Jerusalem and the temple site still rages on to this very day. No wonder we're instructed in Psalm 122, verse 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Amen. Now, Gabriel gives Daniel more insight regarding this future prince to come. Take a look again at verse 27. The, the, I'm sorry. The ruler will make a treaty with the people for a period of one set of seven. But after half this time, he will put an end to the sacrifices and offerings. And as a climax to all his terrible deeds, he will set up a sacrilegious object that causes desecration until the fate decreed for this defiler is finally poured out on him. Now, one set of seven equals seven years. The Bible church speaks of a future seven-year period of tribulation in which the Lord will finish his chastisement of Israel for its disobedience and finalize his judgment upon an unbelieving world. This one set of seven or seven years is pointing to this time, this future time of tribulation. It says here that halfway through this seven year period, this ruler, which we know as the Antichrist, will put an end to the sacrifices and offerings, which leads many scholars to believe there will be a third temple built prior to this event. Now, church, biblical historians have confirmed that 483 years have already passed from the time of the decree to rebuild Jerusalem in Nehemiah chapter 2 to the time when Jesus was crucified, the prophesied Messiah was cut off. God will finish his judgment of Israel and bring them back to him so bring them bring them back to himself during this final seven year period called the tribulation which will complete the final seven years of daniel's prophecy of 70 sets of seven which equals now a total of 490 years as gabriel showed daniel these 70 sets of seven would not be consecutive, but they would be divided into three time periods. The first set, 49 years, has already taken place with the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the second temple after Israel's Babylonian captivity. The second set of 434 years from there has been fulfilled with the coming of Messiah and him being cut off just as Daniel prophesied. Jesus, beloved, fulfilled this prophecy when he entered Jerusalem riding on a donkey on April 6, 32 AD, on the exact day to which this was prophesied, marking the first Palm Sunday when he was hailed as king, and then cut off later on that week on Good Friday. That's when he was crucified, beloved, for your sins and mine. Church, we are still waiting the fulfillment of this third set or last seven year period to come called the tribulation. So there has been a long gap of time between the first 69 weeks, 483 years, which have already been fulfilled uh, completely 
as they were prophesied, and this seven-year period that's still to come, commonly referred to as Daniel's 70th week. Gabriel gave Daniel even more details about this time of God's judgment in verse 27. He said, the ruler will make a treaty with the people for a period of one set of seven, but after half this time, he will put an end to the sacrifices and offerings. And as a climax to all his terrible deeds, he will set up a sacrilegious object that causes desecration until the fate decreed for this defiler is finally poured out on him. This ruler church called the prince to come in other translations or the small horn in Daniel chapter seven is also called the beast in Revelation chapter 13. He is the one who confirms the covenant with Israel at the beginning of this seven year period. However, Daniel tells us after three and a half years, the midway point of this seven year period, not only will he put an end to the temple sacrifices and offerings, breaking his covenant with Israel, but Gabriel tells Daniel, he's also going to set up a sacrilegious object that causes desecration. Revelation chapter 13 tells us that this beast will place an image of himself in the temple and require the world to worship him as God. A sacrilegious act, beloved, that Jesus, quoting Daniel, called the abomination of desolation. And you can read about that in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. Now, this seven-year tribulation is what Jeremiah called the time of Jacob's trouble, where he prophesied in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Once again, church, we see God's promise to Israel, giving them a future and a hope. Remember, church, as long as there is a Jew on earth, there is a God in heaven, a God who promises Israel he will never sleep or never slumber, a God who watches over his word to perform it. Although the Antichrist sets himself up to be worshipped in the temple, claiming himself to be God, Gabriel tells Daniel, this defiler will meet his end when God pours out his final judgment upon him. Beloved, no one knows when these final seven years will begin. But Jesus told us there would be signs of the times all around us in Matthew chapter 24. Church, many scholars agree that the next great event on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church, an event which Jesus taught us no one knows the day or the hour. But we can see, beloved, the signs all around us that this day is drawing near. Beloved, are you ready for that day? Are you ready to meet the Lord in the air? The Bible teaches us there is a way to be ready. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Acts 16 verse 31. To believe is to recognize that you're a sinner in need of a savior. To believe is to recognize that Jesus is that Savior that you're in need of. The one whom the prophet Daniel foretold would come, who would be cut off exactly after 483 years. The one who died on a cross to save us from our sins and to save us from God's judgment to come. 
Beloved, won't you acknowledge your need for the Savior? Repent of your sins and ask Jesus into your heart. Reach out to our church. You know, we have elders and leaders here in our church who'll be willing to pray with you and help you on your journey toward Christ. So reach out to us and let us know how we can pray for you. Now, church, next week, we're going to begin to look at three chapters of the book of Daniel, chapters 10 through 12. Let me encourage you, become familiar with chapter 10 during your personal devotional time this week and read it, read it through. Now, before we close, I want you to stretch out your hands towards the screen with me and let's pray. Let's pray a blessing over one another before we depart. And this blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. I'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us this week as we study God's word together. For those of you watching on YouTube, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the like button. I want to encourage those of you who haven't done so already, please join us on our official online church platform. There you can watch our weekly messages when they go live, as well as connect with our church family. Also, don't forget to check out our website at faithcc.com, where you can receive additional messages and see our upcoming services. At this time, I want to thank all of you who have been supporting our church and ministry with your financial giving. Guys, you are a blessing to us. Together, we are able to fulfill our mission, which is to transform individuals and families through the gospel into empowered followers of Christ. If you would like to give now, please follow the prompts on your screen. At this time, once again, I want to thank you all for being here. And I want us all to remember, church, as we go through this week, that together we are living truth, changing lives, and loving God. God bless you.